Time seems to have stood still in Barani. The small village on the border with Lithuania is currently covered in a blanket of snow. It looks idyllic. But it isn't. The village has suffered from an exodus of its younger population, and many houses are derelict. Some are up for sale for as little as $300, and still no one's buying. Being next to the heavily militarized border doesn't help. In fact, we shouldn't really be here, but we've arranged to meet Renya and Yannick. They used to smuggle mushrooms into Lithuania, but now that it's become part of the Schengen area, crossing the border has become much harder. The border isn't that important, but it's become harder for our children to cross because a visa is expensive. Yes, visas cost a lot. Their son lives in Lithuania, in Vilnius. These days, if he wants to visit, he has to save up. The elderly couple used to be agricultural laborers in a collective, but their pensions aren't enough to live off. They can only make ends meet thanks to their small farm. We had a very small wage, so our pensions are also very small. So life is very hard. But we have animals. We do what we can. We plant potatoes, we have a pig and a cow. But we're not really living, we're just surviving. We're on our way to Minsk. Much of this area is a national park. But right here, close to the border to the EU, is where President Alexander Lukashenko's government is planning to build a nuclear power plant. It would be the first in Belarus. The plan is met with plenty of opposition. Nikolai Ulasevich is head of a citizens' action group. He's risking a lot by talking to us, but he takes us to the site of the planned reactor near Varnyani. We are the first film crew to shoot here. Preliminary geological surveys have been carried out, but construction has yet to begin. We're very worried because this is definitely not the best place for a nuclear power plant. It's one of the biggest and most important health resort areas in the country. Lake Narech and Lake Miachil are nearby. This is no place for a nuclear reactor. Plus, the area has experienced earthquakes measuring seven on the Richter scale. A majority of Belarusians are against nuclear power, not least because the country suffered badly from fallout from the Chernobyl accident in neighboring Ukraine in 1986. Nikolai invites us into his home. The photographs in the living room attest to his work as a political activist. Lukashenko's current efforts to boost EU confidence in Minsk's policies are probably the only reason he's not behind bars right now. Of course, I'm afraid of what might happen to me. No. But I have no choice. It's not about me. We in Belarus have to think of future generations. Nonetheless, taking a stand against Lukashenko's government is a courageous move. On the way to Minsk, symbols of his power are in evidence everywhere. His regime has happily resurrected Soviet imagery and private enterprise is largely banned. Minsk was destroyed in the Second World War and rebuilt under Soviet rule. This explains why Stalinist-era architecture dominates the skyline. At this time of year, Minsk looks like something straight out of a Russian fairy tale. People are ice skating on October Square. It was here that 22-year-old activist Andrei Kim was arrested when he took part in a protest against the government's moves to clamp down on private enterprise. He was sentenced to 18 months in prison for allegedly assaulting a policeman.
The charge was absurd. There was no proof. Of course, I knew that in this country there'd be no such thing as not guilty. But I was expecting a fine, not a prison sentence. But I was put in a real jail with criminals. I wasn't expecting that. It was a shock. He was released after seven months. Andrei takes us to the headquarters of the opposition. The days of regular demonstrations against Lukashenko are long gone. These days, the man called Europe's last dictator has largely stamped out dissent. It's not about Lukashenko, it's about society. Society is afraid and Lukashenko is just its mirror. What we need to do is change the people, not the president. Andrei admits he's afraid of ending up back in jail, but he's reluctant to leave Belarus, even though he sometimes considers it. If everyone left, where would that leave the country? In front of us is the headquarters of the state security agency, all lit up. It's retained the name KGB from the Soviet era. In many ways, just as little has changed in Minsk as it has out in the boondocks.